Hey, it's Jared with State of Tech. This is the third time that I'm filming my review of the Galaxy Z Fold 4. Now, the reason that I have deleted the previous two versions that I didn't even edit, I just filmed them, and then before I had a chance to edit them, discovered new ways to use this device. And each time that happened, I found a new appreciation for what the Z Fold is and what it can become in my life as far as productivity and a mobile device device and what it can accomplish. So the reason that those videos didn't ever end up seeing the light of day is because you really need to think about your device usage differently when it comes to something like this. I came at it as this is a new type of phone. And so when I get a new phone, I start looking for features. I start figuring out, uh, is this any better? Is it any faster? Is it doing anything uh, more for me than the previous version? And I was looking at this very much as a phone, but it's not just a phone, it's a phone and a small tablet. And those two things combined are two different devices that I tend to look at differently and I tend to use in different ways. And I needed to kind of merge that and figure out for myself, what does my daily usage on a device like this look like when it can accomplish some things that I typically would need a tablet for. And that took time. You can't just spend a few hours or even a few days with a device like this. You really need to learn how to use the device so that you can maximize the value that the device provides. And that's challenging, especially when we've got a decade plus of behavior using our traditional smartphones or our smartphones as they've been. So when I started using this phone, I found myself using the cover screen a lot. And the cover screen is very narrow. It's not really meant to be the main screen that you look at. It's there to get the job done. So when phone calls come up, you can answer phone calls, you can quickly reply to text messages, you can see notifications, you can have some widgets on the home screen. There's things that you can accomplish on this screen, but it's not meant to be the main screen. Replying to text messages using the keyboard. Using the keyboard in general is just a real pain on this main screen. If I'm trying to take photos and I want all of the detail and I wanna see everything well, using the cover screen is gonna be a challenge because it is smaller and it's not as good as a larger screen that I would have on a traditional smartphone like my S22 Ultra. And so I found myself early on wanting to go back to my S22 Ultra because that provided me the best smartphone experience. Well, while this is a smartphone, it is more than a smartphone and I have to look at it in that way. And with time, I started doing just that. And now I have a new appreciation for this device. So let me talk about some of the things that stuck out to me as unexpected things that I found that I enjoyed with the Z Fold 4 and maybe that will prompt you to give it a try because a lot of other YouTubers, people that are reviewing this device are calling it a miss and I think it's because they haven't figured out how to utilize the device. So before I jump into that, this device is both a phone and a small tablet and it does all of those things in one device and so you have to change your behavior because if you are a smartphone user and a tablet user those are two different devices and for me i would usually use my tablet in some form of a, a keyboard trackpad mode like as if it was a small computer or i'd be lounging on the couch holding it and consuming some sort of media uh, on it youtube videos stuff like that and this device can do those things but it requires me realizing I can do all those things with one device. So the cover screen, while it being really nice that there is the cover screen, and it's not like the Flip 4 that just has a really small cover screen on the outside, I have to figure out a way to make this cover screen functional for me. And I tried loading it with widgets, I tried loading it with apps and quick launch things, I tried using some of the behaviors that you can customize so that when I open the phone, actions happen, when I close the phone, different actions happen. There's some really neat smart features that are built into this device uh, that allow you to customize it and make it useful for your own daily workflow. But for me, I found keeping the cover screen clean and uh, free of obstructions was probably the best option. So I can use it for looking at notifications, I can answer phone calls, I 
Typically don't reply to text messages from the cover screen by typing, but I will use voice to reply to my text messages there. And then of course, when taking pictures, it's much easier just to launch the camera and hold it and look at the cover screen than it is to open up the device, launch the camera. There's a lot of steps there to get inside the phone and start taking pictures when really you just want something that's gonna be fast. So the cover screen is just really a nice version. I have to look at it as a nice version of the small cover screen that's on the outside of the Flip 4. And so it's there. Uh, not to be my phone, not to be my main screen, but to be a screen that gets the notifications and the main uh, details that I need just in my day to day. But then when I open up the phone and I'm looking at the bigger screen and I have more information there, I have the ability to have more information there when I'm in apps, that's where I really started to, to realize that the things that I love about using a tablet even though tablets typically are a bit bigger than this device, are in this device, just in a smaller format. And where I wanted to be that person that would take my phone with me and take a small tablet and I could be more productive on the tablet, I just wasn't doing that because that was too many things to carry with me. But once I started changing my mindset and my behaviors with this phone, I was using it to multitask, whereas I haven't used my Samsung S22 Ultra to multitask. I haven't had split screen apps. I found that to be kind of clunky, but on a device like this with more screen real estate, I actually find it quite useful. And so when I'm watching a YouTube video, being able to have uh, something else on the screen and I can multitask, watching a YouTube video while taking some notes or replying to emails, um, it's much easier to do those things. I could have a browser tab opened and I can also be replying to emails instead of switching back and forth between apps and having enough screen real estate to where I don't feel like I'm sacrificing too much. It's almost like having two narrow phones next to each other uh, when I'm able to go into that mode and have side-by-side -side apps loaded up. That was very beneficial to me and it came in handy. Now, I also never was much of a photo editor on my smartphone except for just when I needed to get a photo out right away. It was always really frustrating to me because the tool that I use, which is Adobe Lightroom, was relatively small on a phone and I had to swipe a lot and I was accidentally tapping on different things and it just, it was challenging to use on a smartphone. Not impossible, and I'm not complaining because we do live in a time where you could just accomplish amazing things on a smartphone, but on this device, it made it so much easier because there is much more room. So many activities! And I was able to see the image in a much larger uh, format and really zoom in and look at the finer details. And when I needed to, I can use the S Pen to actually do minuscule edits to the image, like spot removal and stuff like that, that just was a bit trickier to do utilizing my fingertip. I mean, I could do the same thing with the S Pen on the S22 Ultra, but having more screen real estate here and it just I don't know it just feels much better and the ability to edit photos in a finer detail and then share them straight from my device is definitely a benefit now there's also the added benefit that this phone that turns into a small tablet can be a device that I can sit down and prop up with a keyboard and even a mouse and get some work done. It, yes, it's a small screen and perhaps might be better to do some of those tasks on something larger like a laptop, but I can do that here. I can take a small foldable keyboard and mouse with me and really churn out some work and then just put those two small little devices away and carry the phone with me. It's very cool to be able to do that and it's something that I enjoy doing from a tablet, but tablets are much larger and so are the peripherals that uh, you typically get for them. So figuring out different ways to utilize this device in my life was the main challenge that I was facing. And I feel that I have figured that out. And now this device is something that brings utility to my life. Now, yes, it still is a thick device. And if you add the S Pen onto the back, it's big and bulky. But if you look at the fact that sometimes we get free time 
that we can use for tasks that we didn't expect. Perhaps you spend time in transit or you end up having extra time at the coffee shop waiting for somebody to get there. This is the type of device that you can open up and get some tasks done and actually feel like you've been productive. We're on a phone, a lot of times we feel crippled and are unable to get things done quickly because everything is so much smaller. This device has solved the majority of those problems for me where uh, of course a laptop would be better or a larger tablet with a good full-size keyboard might be better in some of those scenarios. But when I find myself with extra time, getting things done on this device is really great. When I find extra time for viewing media, watching YouTube videos on this device is really great. And being able to multitask still, being able to jump between different apps. The cameras were an area that I thought that I would feel I was taking steps back because I've had the S22 Ultra all of this year and absolutely enjoy that phone. The only thing that I feel like I'm missing when using this phone from the S22 Ultra is that 10X camera. The 10X camera on the S22 Ultra is absolutely fantastic. But in reality, like would I trade the 10X camera for the ability to have a large screen where I could be much more productive? I found that it's not that often that I'm using the 10X camera. Otherwise, all the other cameras are on this phone and take amazing pictures. I took this phone with me up into Glacier National Park with my wife. We went on a hike, took lots of photos with this phone, and was just really impressed with the images that it captured. And then when we were needing to pull up some weather information and just kind of look at the weather that was coming in, being able to open up the screen and just see more details on the display because it's a larger display. And, uh, you know, just it's nice to be able to do that, have that option. I could pull up an app on the cover screen and see what I needed to see, but if I want finer detail and a little bit more screen real estate, opening up the phone and having that ability is a killer feature and it's where the utility is in this device. So whether your desires for a device like this is increased productivity or just the finer details, I think taking some time and figuring out how you're going to utilize this device and spending enough time with it that you can kind of retrain yourself to utilize a device like this differently because you can't come at it the same way that you would with a smartphone. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself on the cover screen all the time and frustrated because every time you open up the phone, it's another thing you have to do. Open up the phone, close the phone, um, go back and forth between the two different displays. Some of those things can get kind of frustrating and start to feel very gimmicky unless you have retrained yourself and how you're going to use a device like this because it's not designed to be used the same as the traditional smartphone. So with that said, is this phone worth the money? I think if you are somebody who wants a phone that's full functional and has peak performance, flagship performance in a device, and you also are considering carrying a tablet, this handles the majority of those things in one device. Yes, it's not perfect. I kind of wish that this phone was as wide as a standard like the S22 Ultra. And so when I opened it up, it was even yet a little bit wider and had a, a more of a, a standard aspect ratio to it, like a landscape aspect ratio but that's splitting hairs. And in reality, that would make the phone significantly larger and heavier and maybe more cumbersome to use. So while this is a lot to some people, it's thicker, it's heavier, it provides a lot of functionality based on the size and everything that this phone is. The battery life's great, the cameras are great, the performance is absolutely fantastic. And as you use the device more, you uncover new ways to implement its features into your life. And I think that for those of us that want flexibility and we want a phone, but we also want a little bit of tablet in that phone, this is the answer for you. It's definitely not for everybody, but it is for the people who find utility and usefulness in its features. And that takes a little bit of time to get used to. So set that as your expectations. If you go with a device like this, set your expectations realistically so you don't feel like you wasted your money or that it's gimmicky or that all the other YouTubers are right because 
they're not. They're not right because they didn't spend enough time with it and they didn't figure out how to use the device. So that's my review of this device. It's a device that is different and you have to look at it from a different perspective. I've got links down in the description below to some of my other videos where I've talked about this device. I have one or two videos left coming, so make sure to subscribe to the channel here on State of Tech to be notified when those videos come out. And if you found this one useful, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what your thoughts are on the Z Fold 4 down in the comments below. And I hope to see you back in another video soon. Take care.